Hi everybody, I'm Randy Ridings, and this is the Quad Yak Coast to Coast. In 2013, my father and I built a human-powered amphibious velomobile. In 2018, I started a trip from the West Coast in Oregon, headed towards the East Coast. This playlist is a series of videos that will detail that trip. Each video will cover about a 10-day, two to 400 mile leg of this trip. I'm glad to have you with me and hope you follow along to the end. All right, I'm launch at Tulsa. I'm away to Bixby. Oh, hello, gentle viewer. You may be wondering what's going on. Uh, today is Friday the 16th, day 11. The river passes right past one of my cousins. I had dinner, I had a couch to sleep on, Really soon she's taking me back to the river and I'm getting back in. I made it to Bixby yesterday, did 38 and a half miles all the way around Tulsa. I am back at the river. There's a news reporter from local Tulsa station that's trying to catch up with me on the river for an interview. Okay, successful launch, but it is windy out here. Well, I saw it coming, but couldn't do anything about it. I hit this, I was worried about sticking sideways as it is, I can walk through this. Getting out's always an option in stuff like this. When it, well, we're back at this again. Headwind and choppy water. This is not fun sailing. The good news. I'm about to get to that bank and get in the wind shadow that I should be in for the next five miles. I mean, I had waves come over the bow. Done about 12 miles, four and a half hours. I'm in the wind shadow, believe it or not. I mean, I can look up there and see white caps. I can look out there and see white caps. As long as I can hug this bank. This is like 100 yards from that rest spot. So I just got interviewed. Tulsa's Fox 23, Mariah Ellis. Good morning. It is Saturday the 17th, day 12. And yesterday I fought white caps and wind all day. Made 25 miles, but they were a hard one last night. The wind blew all night. So we got very little sleep. So, kind of not feeling it. 6.46 in the morning. Might be trying to meet up with one of my other cousins near Muskogee, Oklahoma. Might come down and visit while I'm on my midday break. It's going to be another hot one today. It's going to be about 100 degrees. I launched four minutes ago. I'm still even with the sandbar that I left. The wind from the left is pushing me up river at the same speed the current's pushing me down river. Well, I have caught the racetrack on this left bank. I'm mostly out of the wind. I'm doing 6.2 miles an hour. And the wind just kind of went away on me. Kind of running the gauntlet down through here. I saw a channel through there. I was in the fast current. I normally wouldn't do something like that. I wasn't even sure if I could get out of the channel to go around it. And it I'm getting down into the area where it's about to connect with the Kerr McClellan uh, navigation channel. 15 to 16 locks until the Mississippi all hit these reservoirs and be down to two miles an hour. And so things will go fast and then slow and then fast and then slow. <laughs> I got a hold of my cousin and she's standing by waiting for me to find a landing place. I have landed at the place I marked and it showed some kind of road in here. So I'm under the Highway 69 bridge near Muskogee, Oklahoma. It's a good thing it's Saturday because the sand operations aren't running today. And walk an old road up to an intersection that my cousin could definitely get to. I got to see Wendy the other day in Bixby. I'm going to get to see Teresa today. Back from a mini vacation. Went into a little nearby diner. I think it's called Porter's. Pretty good cheeseburger and a really good uh, peach shake. Serious current out here. I'm gonna have to get out there, get turned around, and make sure I don't run into some pylons. That was an ugly bridge to get under. A lot of trash piled up under it. Well, there's something they don't tell you in the human powered amphibious guidebook. When it's too windy to be in the water, it's also too windy to set up a tent. To say I'm trepidatious about getting into the real navigation. Out here, I just go wherever I want. Uh, there's no channel markers out here. Nobody cares where I'm at. Like if I start feeling like I'm getting in the way, I'm getting out. And I can't be the guy that caused a barge wreck. Good 
morning. It is Sunday the 18th, day 13. I'm a few miles away from the Kerr-McQuillan uh, Navigation Canal and the Neosha River. I do think I might pull into the Blue Harbor view. Years ago, I went there uh, and saw the reproduction boats of Christopher, Christopher Columbus's fleet. That place is maybe an educational marina. I think they might actually appreciate me coming in, especially the fact that I was on the news two nights ago Okay, raising the axle. Uh, but what I've done is I've backed this up to where I hope the weight of the boat is being supported by the sandbar. <laughs> I'm doing true sandbar, barefoot, mechanic work. And look at that tan line. All right, successful launch, 9.30 in the morning. Got the axle lifted up again, so I got a wider range of gears I can do. I can do about five or six pretty comfortably. Two railroad bridges and a road bridge, I think, all together here. That is a lot of pylons. And through. I think that's the Kerr-McClellan Navigation Channel. From there, you go up to the Port of Catoosa, east of Tulsa, Oklahoma. The major commercial system for Midwest. This comes up from New Orleans on the Mississippi and then turns on the Arkansas. I believe that is the Neosho River couple that was fishing on the bank yelled over told me they saw me on the news this morning the thing that i was looking for was a channel in that harbor oh great great and i've got my electronics out uh, well i didn't see that coming i think i'll wait this out mostly because i'm still a bit nervous about being out on water thunderstorms anyway in a boat with metal frame that's directly connected to the water and then to my body another 100 yards down the river there's the channel and you can pull into this it's just a little artificial harbor they brought uh, Nina and Pinta in here. They were parked there. You can come tour them. It was kind of cool to see how life was aboard Columbus's ships. I'm seeing no lights over there. They almost look like they're rebuilding too. Like they might have had some flood damage as well. This is clearly not the way you would have it if the public was showing up on a day-to-day -day basis. That flood is getting in the way of all kinds of cool stuff. That's flood damage. So that flood was over all this. I just don't think people understand the amount of damage all through the central part of the United States spread out over a huge area. And the Arkansas is considerably larger here now that two more rivers have joined up with it. Deep enough where barges can go down with it would have been impossible just 10 miles up river where all those sandbars were. It's a whole different river here now. I'm bailing the boat out. I get more water in it because of rain than any other reason. There might be a couple more little storms come through. All right, there's another one. Usually, storm systems in this area head northeast. Kind of looks like it's coming this way. I'm gonna have to watch that. If it looks like it's coming my way, I might try to bail onto a bank somewhere. Some of it's coming right on top of my head. There's wind and lightning. Sideways pretty good, judged by that marker. Um, the waves are just starting to white cap on me. If I can find a flat place to pull up, just hunker down while this blows through, I'll be all right. And I'm on shore. I don't think the really heavy stuff's going to come down for quite some time now. I actually have protection if, say, hail starts. Or would a heavy wind take this tree down? I went back to the boat and got my go bag just in case something crazy happened. Uh, I would have all my stuff climb out of here and find help. Yeah, this is not the you know warm summer rain you just drift through different beasts all together. I don't know how hard of a gust of wind it would take to roll me. I present a pretty big cross section. It's almost done it looks like. Blue sky coming, river fairly flat. I still got that storm ahead of me, clear skies over me, but I got clouds behind me. I'm just gonna wait this out. I was getting one mile an hour and just beat myself up to do it. And just like that, in 15 minutes, there is no wind and it is scorching hot. <laughs> well, that's damper. It almost has to have been brought here by the floods. Safely say that that's a flood victim. I needed a break anyway, this just seemed like a 
kind of fun thing to do. It is full of mud. It actually looked pretty good from the water. See this calm? I guarantee you I go out there, the wind's gonna kick up. It is like I've been in the Truman Show today. Every time I launch, the wind kicks up. And then I stop, and this happens. Well, that's kind of funny one. There's a sign on that stretch of land right there, and I really expected to say, like, keep off. But what it says is nude beach. That wraps it on Sunday, uh, August 18th, day 13. Um, I made 22 miles today in about nine hours. Storms and headwinds and white caps. Good morning. It's Monday the 19th, day 14. I'm at the head of the Weber's Falls Reservoir. It's about 12 miles away, I believe, to the locks. My first locks I'll be going to today. But I'm making 2.4 miles an hour. Uh, and I don't think I have a current. Right in front of me is the opening to the lock. Almost in the gate. I'm at 10 miles right now. Just shy of five hours. And that is the lock right out ahead of me. This might be the dam that the two barges we got loose, hit, and rolled. I took a minute back there to put on my life jacket. I put my whistle in my pocket. Got my GPS. I got my rope down here by my side. I think I got everything anybody could ever ask for. I had to stand up, pull the chain. It's way up there. And I saw some people come out and look down here. All right, I'm going through. He came down to just tell me what's going on and flooding the systems. And then I'll open the gate, and then I'll go in. I'll close the gate, drop it. I'm waiting for that light up on that building up there and a blast of a horn. I just heard the down river gate close, so this one should be opening here pretty soon. There's the gates open. There's one of the gates right there. I am tied off to this floating system here, and they are closing the gates behind me. So now they start letting the water down. Now me and my little floating bollard here are sinking. I can see the water line getting higher and higher over there. It's making some wild sounds back there. Now there's pressure on that gate. We're at the bottom of the gate and they are opening the far gate. All right, and off I go. And I'm out. I am through lock 16, Weber's Falls. On the right coming up is Weber's Falls itself, but it's kind of a ghost town since the flood. It looks like Gore, Oklahoma has a little Riverside Park. Leaving the little town of Gore, Oklahoma. Went in, found a diner. It was fantastic. Since the news report came out a couple days ago, uh, I got recognized <clears throat> by one of the waitresses. Gore, Oklahoma. Home of good food, nice people, and one of the biggest scares I've had on the whole trip. Walked back from town, got to the ramp, and the quad jack was not there. It dawned on me for just a second that maybe it had been stolen, but I didn't think so. But what I figured is probably rolled out, so I'm going, please be out in this little cove. And here she sits. She left the ramp. She probably rolled down and hit this eddy current and came around once and came in here. Can't even begin to tell you how lucky I am because it could have gone that way. Gore, you were good to me. Good food, good people, and lucky. All right, leaving Gore. Dripping with sweat after getting stuck in the mud. Heading down to the John Kerr Reservoir, which is about 10 miles from here. It's about 20 miles long. That wraps up Monday the 19th. I did another four miles from Gore. I think I did 18 getting there, so I got about 22 today. Good morning. Tuesday, August 20th, day 15, and then apparently I'm in the jungle. Um, I'm actually in a wildlife refuge. Uh, I think I have about 18 miles from here to a marina, and two more after that to the next lock. Coming into shore, and I saw this thing, invasive species zebra mussels. Eight miles in three and a half hours. I'm taking a shade slash snack slash map break. All right, almost 11 miles in four hours and 48 minutes. Wildlife refuge, really pretty cool. See a huge fish right in there. How are you there, buddy? I'm on the world's loneliest island perhaps. Kind of took a little shortcut through this swamp back here. Got here, found this little sandbar, <clears throat> checked my map, and looks like I can cut out and go straight to that land over there, which is like four miles. That'll be an hour and a half across open water. See, it's really calm right now. It's 96 degrees, it is hot. So, well, except for the heat, I really couldn't uh, ask for better conditions to cross this. Okay, some things are just weird. 
I went across like this line of scum, the line of descumation. And on the other side of it, the water feels different. And then everywhere, there's bubbles coming up. So they're going the same speed. And, and if anything, it's even way smoother. I mean, this is almost mirror smooth. See that wake? That wake stretches back to Hutchinson, Kansas. Some 20 miles or more hard fought and won than others. <clears throat> Kerr Reservoir. I did the whole thing today for about 10 hours. So I'm getting about two miles an hour. The marine is right over there. But as I was coming across, blundered right into a campsite. So w the wind wasn't bad till the very end. So right at the very end, all kinds of stuff happened. I had a Corps of Engineers boat come up behind me like a big barge. And that guy was 100 feet behind me before I ever knew he was there. <clears throat> the paddle wheels are loud. So I don't hear very well. He never blew his horn. I was crossing the line of traffic, and I realized that. I mean, he went right beside me, and then I've got a cut behind him, and as soon as I cut behind him, he turns on his motors, and I get <laughs> spinning around back there. I slathered on sunscreen all day. It said it was like 96, 97, real feel, or like 107. I burned, in fact, I, I've got some blisters. It was a rough one. A couple of signs you've pushed it too far. Cramps in my legs. I have a hard time walking in a straight line. <laughs> I look like I'm drunk. My vision was actually kind of swimming. Like I can't really focus on anything. If your phone voice recognition stuff can't understand you anymore. <laughs> I was slurring words pretty bad. Today's actually one of the, one of the roughest days of the, certainly it's the roughest day of this summer's trip. And I'd put it up there in the top two or three of the whole trip. All right, cooking with Randy. I had a hard day on the river today. When I got off the lake, I couldn't have thought about food. If you had to put the best meal in the world in front of me, I'd have walked away from it. Two hours later, I'll eat anything. Good morning. It is Wednesday the 21st. I am mostly recovered from yesterday. Uh, so this is day 16, two miles away from uh, Lock, Lock 15. About 15 miles later, there'll be another one, 14. Not too far after that will be uh, Fort Smith, Arkansas. Okay, uh, so I have filled up my water system. I guess if the river is dropped again, I did not pull this thing up that far. All right, I'm gonna go to about 10 o'clock. I should be coming around this corner and seeing the locks. So there it all is down there. But you gotta go way out and go around this wall. Entering the gate at one hour 39 minutes. All right, I am approaching a small craft chain. All right, pulled the chain at one hour 53 minutes. I'm seeing water gushing on the sides. That's a sign that they're flooding the, the chamber and about to open this gate. I really need to wait for that light to come on and a horn to blow before I move in. There it is. Two hours, four minutes. After a brief chat, and they have just started swinging the gates. I got tied up at 2.08, and they started swinging the gates at 2.10. Alright, gates closed at 2.12. Two hours, 21 minutes now, and the guy's just moving down to the down river control to let it out. He stopped to talk for a while, which was nice because I got some information. I'm not going to run into any barges. The barges need a nine foot channel and they don't have it right now because all the flooding. That's what all those dredge barges were out yesterday doing. They're recutting the channel. So the thing I was worried about the most, these barges coming along and me being in the way is not going to happen. These guys are bored stiff. I'm like the only guy coming through today. We're going down. So at two hours, 22 minutes. They're dropping me a lot faster than that other one did. It might be a bigger drop than the other one. All right, so they're opening the gate at two hours, 30 minutes. Highway 59, Kerr Bridge is right out there. The gate's completely open at two hours, 31 minutes. There we go, there's the thing and I can go. Is it 19 feet, it was up at 62 is what it looks like. All right, so I've cleared locked door, two hours, 35 minutes. All right, I'm almost at the end of this wall, so it's called two hours, 39 minutes. There's the current I wanted. Getting five miles an hour without hardly even working. I've been ranging back and forth trying to find the best 
current pretty much buoy marker to buoy marker it's because they've dredged the channel through here wherever the channel is that's where the speed is it is hot and humid out here it's supposed to be another 100 degree day today a little over 12 miles in a little over five hours most of that was just sitting sitting at the lock and sitting drifting down here so i just heard a big old thunder clap looks like i'm gonna make landfall about the same time it does that is wilson's rock and i'm glad i'm not out there it's a double rainbow man double rainbow still blowing figured out the lock is about a mile away when this clears i'm gonna head down there this is coming down at 6 30 now two hours get over the lock which should take me 15 20 minutes get through which might take an hour get down to a sandbar somewhere and camp kind of wish you guys would have seen those waves i just went maybe a couple more will come up like that They're two three foot waves serious current they said the water goes under the wall here so i gotta keep fighting to go up he's just gonna open one gate for me he says it's not gonna take long because the chamber is almost full so this is gonna be a new experience two locks in one day uh, this is lock 14. I'm in and I'm tied down and the gates closed behind me. This was a tough one to get to. There's current and wind. So I'm going to get out of this thing. And there's some sandbars just on the left hand side. I'm just going to fight my way over and get to one of those. I've got to do is clear wing dike and whip in behind it. Come out of this gate right here. This is a pretty wild ride, that's for sure. And then you do stuff like that where you get in a whirlpool and it whips you around. I just don't want to get slammed up against the wall. I think I'll be all right now. Get back out in the current. So this is what I'm talking about. These wing dikes and sandbars behind them. See, I haven't caught the main current yet. And I can see it. It's moving left to right way faster than the stuff I'm in. That's how it's done. Right as the sun sets. And I got a nice little beach right here. I'm a mile down from that dam. The trick is you got to get right past one of these wing dikes and get into this pool. If you miss that when you're still 15 feet out, you'll slam into that one. 22 miles in eight hours and 34 minutes wednesday the 21st day 16 i hit over eight miles an hour in that stuff at one point it was a wild ride all right good morning today is thursday the 22nd day 17 fort smith arkansas is like 11 miles away i'll get there in a couple of hours after these locks i get really good current right up until the next lock there are like three barges tied up to that thing. So it's dredging sand up. Look at those big wheels right there that would spin. So this is like a ditch witch. Then the tugs pull up pushing barges. They fill them up. That was pretty easy to get around. And I'm pretty sure I'm looking at my historic site right out there in front of me. So a lot of the original forts around here weren't to protect settlers from Indians. They were to protect Indians from Indians. But the Osage were giving up land to the Cherokee, but there were still clashes. When there were clashes, then they set up these forts to keep the peace between warring Indian tribes. Then later, they would protect settlers. I'm in Arkansas now. I have made another state. So I started this trip 17 days ago in Kansas. I've crossed all of Oklahoma. And this is the boundary line between the Indian Territory and Arkansas. Well, I finally got Wi-Fi, and I got in touch with the people who were coming to meet me, and there they are. They're going up the hill, uh, Mary and her husband, and now I got to get back to the water. So that was fun. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon now. It is now hot. Just missed the kind of sliding launch. People marvel at airplanes being able to stay up in the air, but at least they're lightweight aluminum. You look at something like that made out of all that heavy steel and all that, and just like, how in the world does that thing float? <laughs> It's all displacement and stuff. It's crazy how powerful those things have to be to push that much weight up this river. If there is a chance of more thunderstorms this afternoon like we got yesterday. After seven and a half miles, still in Fort Smith. I'm kind of watching this stuff go through and I thought maybe I would just let it all pass. I'm here to park, there's shelter. I could like just sit over there in the gazebo in the shade and chill out. The heat broke <laughs> as the storms came in. There's one of them. Uh, the one I'm worried about though is the one kind of behind me. There's lightning and it's blowing up some pretty bad waves out here. They found out it's not a good idea to camp here. Even though there's campsites here, I guess this park turns a little rough at night. This 
is one of those, well, do I or don't I? <laughs> Barely white capping out there. It's really not that bad, but <laughs> is it is it over? So I'm going to go ahead and go 630. The wind's pretty much stopped. As soon as I launched, I, wasn't, I haven't even gone a half a mile. The wind kicked up and it's right in my face again. The wind has been going down this river all day long. Well, we're back to waiting. There's a... That all developed over there. There was just a lightning strike with a three second count between lightning and thunder. I hate, hate, hate to camp under bridges, but if this just comes in and parks over the top of me, then I probably will. Well, I suppose I've picked worse places to wait out a storm. Not really cold, although I probably would be if I was out there. It chilled down a little bit. Alright, it's pretty much right overhead now. The lightning flashes have almost no gap between flash to bang. The rain falling. Yeah. There's a little bit. I think I'm okay. I'm a couple feet above the water. That hit the bridge. Yoikes. This is actually kind of cool. These downspouts form like a miniature river system. That's what this whole thing is, is just a ditch formed by the water that falls on this bridge occasionally. Well, <laughs> it never stopped. It's about 8 o'clock. So I pulled the boat up. I guess that's signing off uh, Thursday, the 22nd of August. Day 17 on the trip. I'm under a bridge near Fort Smith, Arkansas. I made about 19 miles today. Good morning. It's Friday, the 23rd, day 18. It has pretty much been raining nonstop for 12 hours, and it's still raining. It was a pretty rough night. Last night, a storm came up from that direction and it didn't matter I was under a bridge. It was like somebody turned a fire hose on the side of this tent. I was sitting up holding <laughs> on to the side of the tent just to keep the tent from collapsing on me. As long as there's still lightning and stuff like that I don't really want to be out on the water. If it was just rain I'd go ahead and go. There is a bit of a dry place right out here from the tent and I thought, wow, if I just moved over there, it might have been a little drier, but I just realized what that is. That's actually the rain shadow from my tent. My tent was blocking the rain out to there. It's going almost sideways. The river actually has come up. Yesterday, this was flowing out to a point out there somewhere, and I was on dry ground. Okay, successful launch at 10.30 in the morning. Once you get out in this stuff, then it's like, who cares? You know, I'm, I'm wet. I'm already wet. Can't really get any wetter. The gate's closed. So my chain's on that side. Uh, this lock is essentially closed. I mean, it's, there's sand jamming the gate, so they can't uh, close the gate completely, and therefore there is a strong current going through the gate all the time, something I would not be able to deal with. So I whipped over here real quick, got in this little lagoon to get out of the way. Park is just right there. It kind of starts above the lock and goes to below the lock. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up and I'm going to put the wheels on and I'm going to roll it over to the park. All right. Most of everything unloaded. We're well, getting the pontoons off in the water. It was actually pretty easy. Just pushed them down. I wanted to go right through there. It ain't going to be fun. Yeah, that's not a bad way to do that. Putting the wheels on in the water. So the worst part of it was doing it in here where I had no idea what's in here with me. <laughs> Got almost no weight in it. Still weighs about 140 on its own, but it doesn't weigh over 200 now. Here comes the fun part. Going up the hill. A couple rocks here that I can use the natural chalk part to go. Come on. <laughs> That was that. It just didn't help that that was mud. I am up. 
on top of lock 13. I have to reload all my stuff. All right, reloaded. These guys are really nice. The work crew back there. They uh, they gave me a bunch of water. Gatorade packs, the little terrible packs. I was just about out of electrolyte stuff. So James Trimble Lock and Dam. If there's more thunderstorms coming in, I think I'd rather be in the campground. I'm gonna watch out for poison ivy here. So far, this is the best access I've seen down river from the lock. The lady up there is like, oh yeah, you can just roll it right down our grassy bank. I don't think she quite grasps it. <laughs> the complexities of that thing. Oh, so the other funny thing is, they have a boat ramp. But it's closed because of the flooding. Okay. I can launch there no problem. Alright, it is 4.30 in the afternoon on the 23rd. And I'm at a campsite. They're calling for more storms. And I have this. Well, good morning. It is Saturday the 24th, the day before the last day of my trip. Uh, and it rained again last night. It rained so much that Quad Yak is nearly full of water. It is actually full to the point, I believe, that it is overflowing. I actually think it started to empty itself out through the holes. Uh, it's about 7 o'clock in the morning. The rain started about 1 in the morning. So I actually got to sleep from about 8 to 1. My tent in that amount of rain just no longer holds its integrity. And then I realized that there was actually water coming in from underneath. And I was in a river. And then the lightning started pretty bad and I realized I was lying in water in a lightning storm. So I got up. I grabbed my air mattress, took my sling bag, came over here, and I spent the rest of the night sleeping on top of the picnic table. All right, 12.40, I'm just leaving the campsite, heading down to that boat ramp. Yeah, it took me 45 minutes to launch. There was a uh, baby water moccasin up in there and he ended up under my boat. Tremble looking down in my rear view mirror, one of the hardest ones. The river is flying through here. Not the best of conditions today, but I am making time. Close to five miles an hour. I've done 12.75 miles in two hours and 40 minutes. I can tell you, I don't think I've ever felt more like Robinson Crusoe in my life. See, this is what you want. 5.8 miles an hour on glass smooth surface. I think the trick to going down a flooded river is stay in the middle. The river is breaching that levee over there and pouring into those lowlands. Uh, so sometimes the water's coming in at high speed and sometimes the water's going out at high speed. All right, I made it to uh, River Ridge Campground. Which, so I did about about 20 miles in four hours. I do have shelters, um, which is nice, uh, but no other amenities here. Uh, signing off uh, today, Saturday, the 24th of August. Good morning. Sunday, 25th of August august day 20 or oh, last day on the river this summer i'm kind of heading into a reservoir it's going to slow down the campground is on the right before the next lock so successful launch about 7 20 in the morning it's chopping up a little bit so i'm definitely pushing on before it gets worse but that bridge right there means I'm two miles from the campground, and that will be the end of this summer's journey. All right, a little under six hours, 16.7 miles. I am on the ground at the campsite. There's the dam, the lock is that long wall on this side, and get the quad deck out of the water, pull it up to the campsite, load it in Dad's truck when they show up, and head home. Join me in the next video where I post the next leg of this trip. You can also follow along on the Quad Yaks Facebook page, and check out my other Quad Yak videos in the other playlist that shows how we built it and other trips I've done with it. If you want to see all of it, you can visit my Patreon page, or if you just want to support me uh, and the trip and my videos and future projects, please check that out. Put a link below so you can find that and support me. I hope you do. Thank you very much. I'm Randy Writings, and this is the Quad Yak Coast to Coast Trip.